Hey, what's going on, people? It's SGZ here from the Spartan Game Zone, and in this video, we're covering part two of the most overpowered weapons in Borderlands 3. And if you missed it, feel free to check out part one. These are the guns that are dedicated to dealing damage, even if that means lacking in other qualities, holding huge amounts of firepower across all the Bolt Hunters. I'll be letting you know where you can get each weapon, explain what they do, and how you can get them feeling the most overpowered. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already, or even follow me on Twitter, and let's crack into it. We open part 2 of the most overpowered weapons in Borderlands 3 with the Magic Kong. A COV launcher that can come in all the elements and has an increased chance to drop from Psycho Reaver who you fight in Vault Hala as part of the Psycho Krieg DLC. A promotion to Major was the last thing King Kong got before falling off the Empire State Building and all his grisly glory is found within this weapon. It must be charged before it can be fired, consumes more ammo the longer you charge it, but also deals more damage. It fires a wobbly missile capsule that holds a deadly payload. The capsule either explodes on impact or sticks to a world surface before unleashing a deadly homing rocket that deals incredible damage. One charge shot is capable of draining massive health bars and you can mob with it too, although its high ammo consumption makes it better suited to the bossing field. It fires one or two projectiles and consumes two to eight ammo depending on how long you charge it and the times two variant is best for one shotting. Although its projectile pattern makes it difficult for you to land projectiles where you want them, when they do land in the correct spot, there's not many enemies that can withstand what they have in store. Up next is the Hellwalker, a Jacob shotgun that can only come in fire and has an increased chance to drop from Road Dog if you fight in the Splinterlands around in this area. The Hellwalker is a blazing double barreled shotgun that is packed with power. It consumes 2 ammo per shot, firing off its entire magazine and devastating health bar. Because it's made by Jacobs, it is even deadlier when you land criticals, popping heads like balloons on your birthday. It's a fire breathing shotgun born through the flames of hell and heavy metal, perfect for keeping kids off your lawn and tearing it up in the borderlands. Whenever enemies are in range of both barrels, this thing will light them up like a Christmas tree. Its pallet count coupled with the Jacobs ricochet effect have it slicing through enemies whenever you land criticals. It's great with reload stack anointment, which will have you reloading lightning fast, and Flat can really become one with this gun. Moving on now to the Face Puncher, a unique shotgun that has an increased chance to drop from Moldock the Anointed. You fight around here in Floodmore Basin after completing the quest, the Guns of Reliance. The Face Puncher is one of only two weapons in the game that don't deal gun damage, but melee damage, and that makes for an incredibly high damage ceiling. It's not a gun that you can simply pick up and expect to deal incredible damage, you have to give it the punchy, and by that I mean build around it with melee focused skills and items. That's easiest to achieve on Amara, but Flat can walk around endlessly with a completely stacked stack bot, and modes can deal some fantastic damage when coupled with a Minesweeper class mod. Across the Bolt Hunters, a Stone Static Charge Artifact is the pinnacle, especially while mobbing, granting it the Brainstormer's effect and a hefty chunk of elemental melee damage. It comes in a standard x7 version or a redundant x14 one, which deals more damage but consumes 2 ammo, and is the one to aim for. It's fantastic with any Anoint, great in terror builds, and if spec correctly, is one of the most damaging weapons in the game. Now for the Yellow Cake, a COV launcher that can only come in radiation and belongs to the Cartel event, which can be activated at any time from the main menu. It can drop from Fish Lamp and Tyrone Smallums outside of Villa Ultraviolet or Joey and the underbosses while inside. 
A yellow cake is a sponge that's gone bad, and this one has traded flavor for damage. It fires a single yellow orb that splits into two more during flight, which each split into another two before falling to the ground. Its projectiles will also split off when in contact with an enemy, and you can maximize its damage by getting the first two to split off at their feet and have the next four explode on the floor next to them. It deals heavy damage and only consumes the one ammo per shot, but you can get a more variant which fires an extra projectile for an added bullet. Like with most splash damage weapons, I'd recommend picking up an action skill and splash damage anointment on it if you can, a consecutive hits or next to mag one for Amara, and the same for modes with Urad also being an option. It's great on all Vault Hunters, serving as a top tier launcher and is perfectly set up for Zane to abuse with a rustler. In that setup, explosions will cover the screen, absolutely decimating the field, with single shots able to take meaty chunks out of big health bars. Moving on to the Anarchy, a TDO shotgun that can come in all the elements including none and belongs to the Guns Love and Tentacle DLC. Dropping most often from Kukua Jack, you fight around here in the Gold Nishai. Many people may find the Anarchy a hard gun to work with, but when you find that bond, there's no denying it's capable of destroying pretty much everything. After emptying its magazine or killing an enemy, it gains a stack and becomes 30% more powerful. The stacks cap at 10 because the damage buff compounds and ends up being almost 14 times stronger when you reach the limit. If you can fully stack it and keep it there, the Anarchy is insane and was at one time the most overpowered weapon in the game. For max damage, you'll want one with the max pallet count of 20 which consumes 2 ammo per shot, but 18 will do. If it wasn't strong enough already, the Anarchy also deals splash damage, which just makes everything better. It can clear a room full of enemies with ease and cuts huge holes in bosses too. There's not many weapons in the game that can do what it does, you just need to have the patience to get it there. Moving on to the Plague Bearer, an elemental launcher that has an increased chance to drop from the Warden, you fight way out here in the Anvil, but only when you're on Mayhem 6 or higher. The Plague Bearer, when fully charged, unleashes a large orb circled by smaller rockets. During flight, those circling projectiles will hunt down and disintegrate any enemies in close proximity, backed up with even more when the initial shot lands. It consumes 3 ammo per shot, which is mid-range for a launcher, but there's nothing mid-range about this gun. On the mobbing field, it is simply unmatched. It can clear hordes of enemies with a few well-positioned rounds without you really having to do anything. It's a gun where you'll be the spectator basking in the glory of the chaos you create. It gets better when combined with an Infernal Wish, and all characters can summon mountains of damage with it in their hands. Flak with extra projectiles and an increased critical count, Moe's with added splash damage and splash damage radius, Mara with extra elemental power and ricocheting rounds, and Zane with a guaranteed 2 for 1 deal and everything else he brings to the table. Whatever way you look at it, you can't go wrong bearing the play. It's time to move on to the Lucky 7, a Jacob's Pistol that belongs to the Handsome Jackpot DLC. Dropping from Scraptack Prime over here in the compactor, they can also be found by defeating the Skag of Survival by completing the trial of the same name on True Trial Difficulty. The Lucky 7, in my eyes, has the potential to be the most overpowered weapon in the entire game, but as the name suggests, you need some luck. Every time you reload, your character will roll for damage, having about a 20% chance to be gifted one of its 5 bonuses. Those bonuses include explosive rounds, fully auto, always critical ricocheting amp shots, elemental type, and 7 pellets. Each one increases its DPS, but 7 pellets will provide the largest single buff. If you're holding your 4 leaf clover, have your rabbit foot slippers on, and are underneath a hanging pair of fuzzy dice, you may just get all 5 bonuses, which is where this weapon becomes unstoppable. 
it'll transform into the World Eater, absolutely demolishing whatever you set your sights on. Now normally that'll only last for a short period, but modes can make it easily last forever and other characters can set themselves up in a terror build. When firing on all cylinders, it's capable of clearing all content in record time and truly is a phenomenal weapon. Next up is the OBQ system, a non-elemental Atlas assault rifle that belongs to the Cartel event, dropping from Josie Byte and Franco Firewall, and of course Joey Ultraviolet. The OBQ system is a gun that has something for everyone, it fires two bullets per shot at a great pace, with the occasional shock round chucked in there for good measure, granting it splash damage and some elemental fury. Its secondary mode also lets you spawn a copy of the gun as the friend you never had, granting some bonus damage. Now normally that damage is just that, a bonus, but on modes with all that ammo regen you can spawn a whole lot of friends at once which can destroy bosses on their own. All its parts put together make an incredible weapon across the board, but by only coming a standard way, it perhaps isn't the best in a single department, but you know what they say. Jack of all trades is the Josh of all guns. Next up it's the Unkempt Herald, a Torg hand cannon that has an increased chance to drop from Cabadow who you fight around here in Blood Sun Canyon as part of the Bounty of Blood DLC. The Unkempt Herald, also known as Dirty Harry Callahan, is a gun as devastating as it was in Borderlands 2, but with an altered projectile pattern. It fires the same 7 projectiles regardless of the weapon card, making the times 3 variant the best one. All 7 of them aren't visible at once though, emerging from behind one another after travelling a short distance, making it better at medium ranges, and for Amara, heavy range should be avoided. It holds immense power, even capable of one-shotting bosses, and comfortably dominates on the mobbing field too. Its high projectile count makes it great on all Vault Hunters, even Flak who isn't very akin to its type of weaponry. It bludgeons its way through health bars, hitting them where it hurts, and has a nice fire rate which helps it to keep the damage coming. Whether mobbing or bossing, the Unkempt Herald has what it takes, whether it's fired 6 shots or only 5. Number 1, we're here, we did it before finishing all our Doritos, and the most overpowered weapon for part 2 is the Complex Root, a melee one sniper rifle that belongs to the Bounty of Blood. With an increased chance to drop from Lenny Dixon, he fight out here in Ashfall Peaks. The Complex Root is a gun that's just that, complicated. It doesn't conform to any of the traditional damage principles, but somehow conjures up a whole new level of power. It fires twin bursts of energy that spawn a number of projectiles that zigzag from the epicenter and along the flight path, triggering constant explosions. When they land, pure rage fills the air as a crescendo of lasers dance around the impact point. It deals extreme amounts of damage, leaving destruction in its wake. Because it deals splash damage, things get pretty messy. If your modes will cause explosions the size of Pandora, which will comfortably down you, but also annihilate your enemies, the classic Catch-22. Zane can abuse its power with the racer, allowing him to one-shot practically every boss in the game with ease. Not only that, but when combined with the Hustler class mod, you can use it to practically break the Borderlands. The interaction it summons is crazy, causing a single shot to trigger countless explosions, which literally destroy everything on screen, and that's not an exaggeration. It's unreal, you'll definitely need some form of immunity for that to work, for me it's the red suit and an elemental projector artifact for peak damage. All those bright lights may even show you a glimpse of your future, but whatever you see, I wouldn't read into it too much. Unlike with most sniper rifles, this is one that values your ammo pool, allowing you to take it into any combat situation. So that's all for this video, I hope you enjoyed it, learned about another 10 overpowered weapons in Borderlands 3, and if you missed it, don't forget to check out part 1. If you enjoyed the video, consider dropping a like or subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next one.